Welcome back everyone. It has been quite some time since I released my last video and I've come up with new product and new video. Now this is a new product for 3D artists to create some amazing look for their renders and uh, we'll dive into how you can use it in your daily render life. So let's quickly get into it. So here I have a basic model and some cloth on top of it. I've created this cloth and marvelous designer. So let's see how we can create some interesting pattern for this cloth. So if I go to my IPR, I have a camera set up here just for a quick look and I'm going to start off my IPR and this is what we have. So the first thing that we are going to be doing is uh, let me just change my overall camera angle from this. I'm going to keep somewhere about here to something like this just so we get the idea of the whole body to something like this. Uh, I think that looks good. Let's keep it to that. I'm going to lock my camera here and let's close this down. So uh, the thing with this cloth is it has two sided uh, color, uh, the front side and the back side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the overall front side, which is the outside part. And here you can see we have the dark red color for the outside part. So let's quickly get into what uh, Revelit is all about. So this is what the overall pack looks like. You have around 150 images and plus some bonus content for your daily render life. And uh, we'll see how we can use one of these images to create some amazing look for this. So what I'm going to do is quickly go into the hypersheet and uh, maybe let's go for Arnold and I'm going to start off by taking a mix shader. And in the mix, I'm going to go to graph and I'm going to call this Revlet. All right. So let's start off by taking a first stand surface. Let's delete the output. We don't need it. And I'm going to call this one gold. And I'm going to take a gold preset just to speed up the whole process. And I'm going to attach this to shader two. And let's uh, minimize this. And uh, let's take another standard surface. And uh, so basically what we are trying to do is create two, uh, mix two different shaders to create some interesting look and you'll see in a bit why. And let's call this matte maybe, All right? So I'm gonna take maybe again something like this and I'm gonna add some more roughness into it, maybe like 0.8. And this looks good. Let's make it shade to one. And there you go. Now we have mix that looks something like this. Not that interesting looking. Now here comes uh, the interesting part. If I go to my browser here and uh, in Windows Explorer here, sorry, my whatever this is. Um, and if I take any one of these images, uh, let's say I go for something like this and drop it here. If you want, you can use AI image as well with the Arnold. And I'm going to quickly move this here and I'm going to connect this to sorry to the mix and uh, there you go. Yeah. So now you'll start to notice that we are getting this weirdly pattern. Now if I disconnect this pattern, sorry disconnect this image, you'll see that we have something like this and uh, we have a very interesting pattern in grayscale value. We have some black, we have some white, we have some gray value. Now we can take a color correct node just so we have better control on this image. So I'm going to take a color correct node here. I'm going to attach the color to the input here. Now I'm going to just change some level of details here. I'm just going to make some values go a little higher. So I'm going to increase some contrast here and you won't see much of the thing happening here. That's a simple problem with Arnold uh, IPR refreshing. So just hit pause and refresh and it should work yeah there you go so i'm gonna make it one again so let's increase some contrast here maybe like 1.2 and uh, let's let's decrease the gamma to 0.9 and i'm gonna increase some exposure to maybe like 0.2 like maybe higher yeah, like 1.5 all right so there you go so uh, we have just tweaked the value for this instead of just a subtle value we are going for a bit harsh value in this. It totally depends on what kind of scene you are creating for this type of design. And uh, there you go. Shoot a ball and uh, sorry. There you go. And we have something like this. So let's take a look. So I'm going to go to my IPR. Let's go to our camera here. And this is what we have. I'm going to click on my cloth here. 
and uh, where is my cloth yeah there you go and we'll right click here and go to existing pattern and there is our material so I play again on my PR there you go some interesting pattern going on I'm gonna pause this close the outliner and let's maybe go to the perspective perspective and yeah just so we can see a bit clearly so here you notice that uh, we are getting some pattern but it's not mm, that good looking not exactly what we were going for so what I'm gonna do is quickly select this go to reveal it and uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is quickly do a automatic mapping on this because this is not UV'd or UV solved so here you'll notice that we are getting some unusual pattern around here and here so the first thing I'm gonna do is go to here and create auto automatic mapping for this and with this I'm gonna hit play again and now we can start to see a pattern perfectly so now with here I right, come closer to here you start to see all the nice stripes and everything with the pattern and everything and you can always tweak it change it if you want and there you go I say done so this is how you can create amazing pattern to give just some extra look to your overall renders I've done some expi example renders with my own creation with this and I'll show you in a bit how I've did it and uh, what they look like and but you can pretty much the overall creativity process is up to you how you can develop this on your own idea and if I go to my man here I'm gonna take the same material and all right so there you go so this looks pretty interesting so again the creative process is totally up to you how you come up with ideas to use this and this looks pretty interesting so this is how you can use one of the ideas to create some amazing looking pattern of a human to create some amazing renders All right so apart from this what you can else do is you can use something else like for example let me just get rid of this you can take a simple primitive as an example and I'm gonna just scale this up and let's apply our material with lit and there you go and this is what it looks like very nice pattern so here instead if you want to just like change the color and everything instead of uh, gold what you can do is you can get into the gold and maybe like change something to maybe like jade and uh, you'll get that greenish pattern if you don't like the other red color what you can do is go here in the mat and make it maybe like a black there you go totally up to you make a bit more metallic if you want less rougher much shinier so this is how you can use this back with Arnold and Maya now we'll jump into Cinema 4D to see how we can use this with Arnold and Cinema 4D alright so I'm here in Cinema 4D and for those who use Arnold with Cinema 4D um, with Arnold in Cinema 4D there's a little bit of tricky things I mean the pretty much the process is the same but there are a few things that are a bit changed so I'm gonna demonstrate how we can use that so here uh, I'm gonna take a physical sun and sky for our lighting purpose and I have almost the same setup here and uh, here you'll notice that I have my cloth here for the outside cloth and the inside cloth we only going to be using the outside one alright so uh, just like you have a preset library in Maya you get the same preset library in Cinema 4D just for the standard uh, in the content browser so what I'm gonna do is take a gold preset from here and I'm gonna open up the outside by double clicking it and open up the network editor so let's close this and yeah let's bring this yeah alright so I'm gonna turn this on IPR and uh, the first thing I want to do is take a mix shader drop it here connect it to the Arnold Beauty and the first thing that we get is nothing so the first thing I'm gonna do is connect this to the shader one which is our basically a simple red matte cloth the second thing I'm gonna do is pick up my gold material and drop it into the node editor and again attach this to the shader too All right so we have two material blending in and I'm gonna go in my uh, rivulet pack here and take in this so we have the rivulet 139 I'm gonna use this to uh, mix this together right I'm gonna make uh, the gold material overall to maybe like 0.2 just a bit more rougher 
and again open this again all right so i'm gonna hit alt w here and hit one to attach this to the beauty and one thing you'll notice that we are not exactly getting any of that rivulet pattern here and the reason is because the uv mapping on this is not perfect uh, the same issue that we have in maya so what i'm going to do is quickly i'm going to cheat this by simply going here and instead of projection to uvw mapping i'm going to choose something like maybe a frontal all right so this is going to be just a whole cheating the system this is not going to give you a perfect result but it will do the job i'm going to take a color correct node to control my rivulet attach this to the input and again this to the mix so again hit all w and one and i'm gonna reduce some gamma increase some contrast some exposure and uh, like maybe let's leave the gamma too all right so this looks good and again select this with shader and there you go so again uh, this is what the overall process in cinema 4 a is and uh, we can try some different thing as well with this again you can use this with this man as well i'm gonna turn off the cloth so here if you want uh, if you're going for something like maybe a meta human kind of look you can use this as well uh, in the ghoul what you can do is you can take maybe something like a uh, emission channel right and let's make it do something like this right and uh, you can create maybe like something like a meta human kind of look like uh, we just reset the whole value here and uh, now this looks a pretty good overall look for the overall meta human kind of look so this is how you can use it as well i'm gonna give some subdivision to this add some character clock and there you go so let me just make this nine percent so this is how you can use this regular pack with the overall combination of different shaders now again there are a couple of other variations as well you can use this maps for anything that you want it can be a roughness map it can be a bump map this totally depends on you like for example um, i'm gonna quickly get rid of all the materials let's get rid of this i'm gonna open up a sphere and uh, let's select the sphere hit s to focus it and let's increase the subdivision to 100 and let's create a new material stand surface drop it let's turn on ripr if you don't have the uh, i've created my own custom menu here if you want you can go to arnold and ipr there you go so here um, i'm going to create a glass material so let's go to material let's choose glass and uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my pack here to reveal it and uh, sorry open up the network shader and drag and drop in again and with this what i'm going to do is i can basically go to the specular roughness here there you go so now if i if you see this map all w1 we have something like this i'm going to go to my sphere and let's choose spherical mapping and i'm going to hit e on my keyboard sorry r for the rotation i'm going to rotate this to something like this all right so we have something like this and i'm gonna choose this all right so here uh, you'll notice that uh, by using this we are creating a custom roughness value here i'm gonna choose go to advance and turn on the caustic and exit to background to get more perfect result and one last thing is to take a simple arnold tag and turning off the opaque uh, these are all the basic steps. i think everyone already knows but i think i should have i think i should tell you anyways uh, so here you'll notice that we are getting this custom roughness pattern here and again i'm going to take a color correct node i'm going to attach this to the color correct and let's attach this back i'm i'm going to make this effect a bit more stronger again uh, let's increase the overall yeah there you go and let's attach this to the roughness and this to the beauty again so here you'll notice that we are getting much a rougher result with this and i'm going to choose alpha luminance and here you'll notice that we are getting a much rougher pattern if you don't like this overall what you can do is you can simply hit invert and let's reset the whole value right click right click and uh, maybe reduce the gamma some more and increase some contrast and there you go so now you're getting the opposite result here 
uh, the inverted version of the overall roughness that you had. So this is how you can use it as a roughness channel. Um, again, I'm gonna make this, let's create a plastic here, turn this off. And let me just quickly demonstrate the overall bump to the bump mapping. You can attach this and attach this to the overall uh, geometry normal. And now you can use it as a bump map as well to fake the overall displacement. And uh, this is what I've done for my renders as well, which I'll show you in the end of the video, how I've created the Revealed Pack to create some amazing renders with more good looking depth. So this is how you can use uh, this grayscale image to create this amazing overall veins and all that look. And apart from this, what you can do is again, uh, take it to the emission color and again increase the overall weight. If you want to change the emission color, what you can do is you can take a color correct node and attach this input and color and again you can change the color to something like this, right? Increasing the value of the emission and we change the base color to something like this. Add a bit more roughness. Right, so there you go, you can use it for something like this as well. Uh, apart from this, what you can do is, uh, I'm gonna take a simple plane and uh, let's create another material for this. Go to unsurface, turn surface, drop it. And uh, let's call this T. And I'm gonna open up my network shader here. Again, I'm gonna take the same image and instead I'm gonna choose a simple displacement here and uh, I'm gonna quickly plug into the displacement right again we should take a color correct node if you want to make it a bit more harsher uh, or a bit more stronger it totally depends on you I'm just gonna change some values here just so yeah it looks good all right so if I play this now turn on your IPR you'll get something like this, which is not exactly that good looking. All right, so the first thing that we have to do is go to plane here. If you look at the lines here, you'll notice that we get pretty low subdivision. I'm gonna make it 500 by 500. You don't need that many, but I can use it. So I'm using it. Or you can go to Arnold Primitive, uh, Primitive and take a linear subdivision. All right, so we have something like this again. And uh, the first thing that you have to do is change the overall displacement, which is a bit too strong. So I'm gonna make it something like 10. And now we are getting somewhere. I'm gonna just change the overall sky here to elevation to a bit low. Maybe increase some more samples here. Let's increase some exposure here. All right, so there you go. So now we have nice, good looking result. I'm gonna increase some more exposure for our overall render and again if you use a Keraklax subdivision that will be perfect for this case scenario and let's use a iteration of two all right so now it looks something like this and again you can use something like maybe a sphere let's make it 40 let's make it 50 and let's bring this out here something like this and the way to fix this is uh, we are going to get some kind of um, bad displacement with this. To fix it, we have to add some bounce padding. The bounce padding, that will fix the whole issue. And uh, you can add some material to give a nice look for the sphere. Maybe like go to the content browser, maybe take a frosted glass and drop it on your sphere. You get something like this. So you can use this to create this type of displacement as well. Uh, the carvings and everything. And uh, you can use some depth of field as a combination with this. I'm going to focus on this and let's turn this on. And now there you go. So you have nice depth of field, maybe a bit too strong. All right, so there you go. So this is how you can use the reveal it pack to create different type of uh, amazing images, amazing renders. And uh, it was a lot of effort creating this pack. So I hope you enjoy this. When you're creating something, please tag me, add me, show me, send me, whatever you want. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, the creative process remains the same on any other 3D application. If you're using Blender, Houdini, the overall process remains the same. You have a basic image. You use that image to 
basically create either roughness or emission or whatever channel you are trying to create. If you want to create a roughness, you use that in a roughness channel. If you want to create emission, you use that in an emission channel. So again, you can use this maps as a masking method as well. So whatever you're targeting, you can use a simple image. The overall creative process remains the same. Uh, again, if you want, if you are using a simple physical render engine even with Cinema 4D, what you can do is you can take the overall color here and uh, you can drop in your image here and you'll get that as well you can use some overall reflectance channel here and uh, yeah maybe reduce the overall reflection here so you can use that into the bump mapping of your physical shader as well so you will get nice displacement if you want to use displacement you can paste that shader you're going to get displacement so the overall cre creative process remains the same if you're using corona render engine again you can plug it in your diffuse uh, the overall bump map uh, if you're using a node editor you can use it in, in your node editor as well so the overall creative process remains the same if you're having trouble creating anything that you want uh, or can't figure out how to use this maps you can hit me on instagram or any social media i'll be happy to work uh help you uh work it out and apart from that that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video enjoy this pack and i'll see you next time <laughs>